everyone, I'm Jay and this is the Camden Stitch. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, thanks for joining me and Happy New Year! Yeah, I am recording this on the 31st, it is coming up 6pm. I think I've got slight ring marks on my face, I went swimming this morning and I'll tell you the goggle marks take a long time to leave your face. Um, I've just ordered some ones that aren't, aren't supposed to leave such a mark so hopefully I won't be walking around with big raccoon eyes. Um, anyway, I have missed you all so much since Vlogmas. I loved doing Vlogmas so much. It was very tiring and I know I didn't do proper Vlogmas in that I had to take a break but I'm so pleased I came back and I just enjoyed so much the connection that I got with you all, chatting with you every day pretty much. I just need to say the comments you lot left on my Vlogmas, um, especially on the last day, were the loveliest thing and they meant so much to me and I had such a happy few hours reading through that. I think there was 240 comments the last time I looked. Um, I have tried to reply to you all individually. If I've missed you, I'm really sorry. I've been trusting YouTube to tell me which comments I haven't responded to, so I really hope I've managed to uh, reply to you all so thank you so much for your for your kindness in what you said just made me really happy yeah you're all wonderful thanks so much oh I know what I meant to say I did mention it a while ago but I haven't mentioned it for a while if you are on Instagram and I don't follow you can you leave me your if you want me to follow you, can you leave me your Instagram handle in the comments and I will follow you. And if your Instagram name is different to your YouTube name, just let me know which one's which so that I can make that connection um, because I love to see what my followers are up to. I thought we could just have a quick hello. I'll show you what I'm sewing and tell you sort of a little bit of a catch up on what's new with me. Well, I cut these out during December in the hope that I could kind of make them up while um, as a break from doing the coat but I didn't get a chance to do that. I think I may have sewn a few seams together or pinned some pieces together but I didn't get a chance to do much but for fortunately they're pretty easy patterns. So the pattern I'm making is from December Burda and it's this big long sweat dress with a big high neck and the nice feature about it is it has a button back with loads of big buttons down it and it's available in a sweater as well that's the sweater version you can see the buttons on the back there and hang on where's the line drawing there's the line drawing of the sweater on the back so I'm making three of these sweater dresses in various sweat fabrics I had kicking around. This one I got from Amsterdam last year from the markets. Um, it's sort of a bit crazy. It's like two layers bonded together, the black one and then the red one on top. Um, it's been okay to stitch with. I don't think the... Uh, machine loves doing the buttonholes on it. It started going a bit wonky last night and I had to kind of leave it, walk away from it and give the machine a rest. Um, then I've got this jersey from Colville, which unfortunately is kind of very thin. So it's going to be a bit more of a kind of drapey dress than a sweatshirt, but this is it. Yeah, they're both houndstooth, aren't they? Um, but I really love this kind of mod, very large exaggerated houndstooth. And it's like got a crepe feel to it. And I think that one would be a nice kind of more of a dress than, than like a big sort of sweater. And the last one, I am using this really lovely Ponte that I sold in my shop last year. And it's got this sort of washed effect on the top of the leopard skin, which I think just makes it a little bit more kind of like sweatshirt fabric than like leopard kind of like more dressy. You know, I just think it dresses it down a little bit. So I'm at the stage that I've got all three sewn together and so tonight the only thing I've got to do is put the buttonholes on. So that's 21 buttonholes. They're big buttonholes so I have to do them manually and all obviously three different types of fabric. So I have to do make up different samples, interface the samples 
of the scraps of fabric so I can try the buttonholes out. So it's a bit of a faff, it's going to take me a while, but overall it, they've been a nice easy sew and a nice kind of respite from um, the coat. I couldn't even touch the sewing machine for quite a few days. <laughs> I was like, I never go more than a day without sewing, but on this occasion I just couldn't, didn't want to get back into it, I don't know. It kind of broke me a bit, but on the other hand, what a fantastic thing to make. And the best thing is, Ian has not stopped wearing it. He has worn it every single day. And he's gone off to Scotland for a week because um, he's got some family stuff to deal with. And when I made it, I kind of made it slightly with him visiting Scotland in mind because obviously it's cooler up there. And he doesn't really have that many thick coats because when we go out down here, we're not walking around outside that much. There's a lot of public transport. When you get on the tube, it tends to be quite hot. So there isn't really that much. And often it's mild, you know, even through the winter, it's been like 10 degrees. So there isn't that much need for a great big warm coat. But when he's traveling up there, he went on the sleeper last night and I thought, you know, at least he can kind of put it over him like a, um, you know, like a bit of a blanket and things. But anyway, I did say to him, when you're on the train, make sure you find the hook and hang it up, hang it up properly. But he takes care of his clothes. He's very meticulous like that. So I know he's not going to kind of wreck it or anything. Um, so he's delighted with it. I'm delighted that he's delighted. It's all great. All the worries that I had over the kind of cock-ups that I made and worries about the fit kind of all dissipated once he started trying them on you know I was kind of worried about the hang when I saw it on the mannequin but then as soon as he's wearing it it's fine it's all fine I'm glad I did it like I did um, I'm glad I put the hem weights in and things my only regret is that I didn't use proper interfacing so I'm going to buy some good quality interfacings to use in my other coat projects that are up and coming so speaking of coats that brings me on to what I'm going to do for January because I've actually got two UFO coats in my UFO filing system I thought what we could do is go through all my UFOs some of them I obviously know that I'm going to continue with because they're kind of half made and some of them kind of the season changed halfway through me making them so they finished up getting left I've got three summer dresses all cut out some are half sewn but then it got cold so I'm definitely going to carry on with those but it'll be kind of in the summer probably but I've got quite a few projects in my UFO box that I don't know whether I'm going to persevere with them or not um, because I think sometimes it's maybe not worth it like if you realize halfway through that the fabric choice is wrong is it really worth carrying on sewing it up when you know that you won't wear it because it's the wrong fabric choice or that's a poor example so I thought what we could do is go through my box together and I will ask your opinion on some of the items as to whether or not I should persevere with them and you can help you can help me work out what to carry on with and what to consign to the bin of regret. Right, well that'll be coming up, but um this wasn't really a proper vlog, it was just more of a popping on to say hello. I have got some proper vlogs coming up. Um, New Birder will be out soon and I've obviously still got to edit all my pattern drafting videos, which I know I keep wittering on about, but I really did think I'd have a chance to edit them in December. And then, you know, Vlogmas meant I was editing every single day, so I couldn't really have done any more. Never mind. I've also, as I said, been out to the gym today. It's a bit of an achievement for me because Ian's away. Um, it's probably like the first time I've been out on my own in coming up for, for a year. I don't know. It hasn't been a very frequent thing. And I'm on my own for a week. And I said to myself, it will be good for you to make yourself get out. And I've joined this gym. And I have been wondering about joining this gym for over a year. It's super expensive. But the local gym near me is a very, it's a massive one. It's like a flagship one that Camden have, have built and it's right behind King's Cross Station. And it's a brilliant facility, but it is so, so busy. And Ian goes there and he just treats it like a job, you know, like a chore. But because of my nerves, I need gyms to be a bit more of a chilled out experience. And unfortunately, private gyms in London are ridiculously expensive. You know, I live 
in a poor area on a poor council estate but unfortunately the gyms are priced for you know the gym that i go to is priced for city workers corporate people so it's mega expensive so i spent over a year wondering whether or not to do it and then when i kind of through the hypnotherapy that i had it helped me work out my priorities a bit he sort of said what do you want and i just said i want i want to be able to go to the gym because to me being able to go to the gym it's not to do with what you do at the gym it's to, it's the being able to go so it gets you out it gets your body moving even just physically getting there it gets you into into an environment where you see people you know if you're fortunate you get into working out and you get the endorphins from that and i've had that in the past and it's the best thing ever for my mental health and probably for my for my physical health as well i think that some of the problems i don't think all the neurological problems are caused by being inactive but i think that some of the difficulties that i've had are caused from being just extremely unfit just walking like 50 paces a day every day for a year you know i'm kind of rotting from the inside out and so I just thought to myself well this is kind of like, like I don't mind spending my money on like I don't want to fritter the money that I have I don't want to fritter it away but I'm I'm happy about spending it on my health that's why I'm happy to pay to see this hypnotherapist because you know I've tried the NHS angles and as you know I'm not getting anywhere there so put that on one side and say okay well what are the priorities in my life to get better and to improve my quality of life and to do that i am going to have to bite the bullet and go to you know get this gym subscription and then make myself go so that's where we are at the moment i've been a few times well i've been twice but you know the main thing is i got there today which was going to be a difficult thing i'm hoping to just build up the amount that i swim and then as I get fitter and I'm able to kind of breathe a little bit more, um, then work work myself up into going to classes because I used to absolutely love going to classes, body pump and things. I used to like the social element of it and just, yeah, getting a real buzz off it. And it does cause me pain, but equally being inactive causes me pain. So kind of, is it better to have the activity and the pain and then at least you've got all those other benefits that come with being active. So, that was a bit of a ramble, wasn't it? Sorry about that. What are you all up to tonight? I am a fully paid up member of the staying in and being in bed before midnight. I really um, couldn't care less about New Year's this year. I don't know, on Instagram everybody's reflecting and all that and... I don't know, I think I think with all my bloody therapy, I'm constantly caught up in a morass of navel gazing and reflection and I don't need to do any more, more of that. So, you know, for me, it's just a matter of getting through it and trying to get through it with a smile on your face. So my night will be staying in and wongling for as much as possible, having a nice stress-free wongle. Please button holes, <laughs> behave yourself. I hope that wherever you are, obviously, if you're in... Um, the northern hemisphere i don't know if you're in australia and new zealand you've already had it so happy new year to you you're already in 2020 and everybody else have a fantastic time tonight don't get too uh, squiffy on the champagne will you and i shall speak to you very very soon so i shall see you in the new year lots of love bye